Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new shop. My name is Keith and I am your host. The Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, on with the show. Today we hunted around and we've collected the tools that we need for this welding project, part of the project anyway. Uh, because, you know, moving over here to the new place, you pack up everything and then you move it on over here and, and you put it somewhere and then you got to unpack it. Well, some things are unpacked and some things aren't. But I think we pretty well found everything. I, I did find my temp sticks and I also found my infrared. And we're playing with both of those. We're going to cut a piece of shim and we're going to put it around the bearing diameter underneath there so the jaws don't come in and actually make a, 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 an imprint or a blem or any kind of scratch on that surface. Because when you start heating things up, they swell and they contract. And even though you might not have it tight when it heats up, it does swell and it creates pressure. And the aluminum absorbs some of that pressure there. Our rod came in today. All right, and we're going to open this up. This is a uh, uh, Atomark 4340, and like in the first video there, we actually were going to we were going to try another another rod there, which was the 41 uh, uh, 4130. Uh, that rod's not easily available, so our supplier uh, uh, recommended we looked in the literature and we we found a uh, alternate and we're going to try the 4340 rod which lets you actually work with your 4130s, your 4330s and your 4340s. Um, now all of these low hydrogen rods um, now this can is this this can is sealed but I have my oven here and brought it in today as well and it's on and I'm going to go ahead and stick the rod in there and I'm going to leave it in there overnight and uh, it, working with I mean I could put it in there for a couple hours and work late tonight or whatever but you want one I'm pretty confident that this rod is ready to use right now out of the can but warm rod really does tend to ignite nice and easy and and flow this is also 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter and it's a little heavy, but we're doing a well buildup. This is not like we're joining two parts and we're trying to put the perfect fillet in there. We want to build mass, and so as long as we have our preheat, our inner pass temperatures controlled, and then how we control the post heat uh, for just normalizing it from the welding on down to where it cools down, it's ready to go in the machine to weld it. Annealing we did, we, annealing is controlling the cool down to change um, from hard to softer. And normalizing is just letting it cool down at room temperature. So there's basic two differences there. And it, by going to normalizing, it's not going to, you're not quenching it or anything else, so you're not going to go into the hardened state. All right. So, we'll go ahead and open this up. And those are some fatties. Okay, so we're just going to pick the right the right temperature range. But we definitely have enough mass here to build that diameter up there. So, picking the right voltage or the amperage to burn this rod and sitting there. I brought it down on the ground here because I want to, one, you have to be comfortable. And I had it up on the stand there and standing and trying to control your arc and everything is going to be a little more difficult than I can sit here. I can control the rotation very nice with here. I can crank this and I can tilt it out a little bit. I can actually hold the stick and I can put my elbow on my knee right here and I should be able to give a nice un uniform feed on that rod and make them optimum true part you know 
It's it's basically like building a drip castle, but you you got to control it. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this wand in here in the oven now, and the oven's gonna be here nice and close, so we're not gonna have to like put it in a sheath and carry it on the ship and go on down into a space and keep our rod warm. We'll be able to reach right in here in the oven and grab our rod when we need it. If this was an old, old can of rod and they, you know, like they didn't give me a plastic cover to go on here, but I have several of them over there. I also have a couple of screw uh, O-ring containers for walling rod, and I may put it in there. I don't know how much I'm going to have left over. I, I suspect that I'll probably have half of that left over. I don't think it's going to take a whole 10 pounds of, of material in here. All right, so that's going to be, that's going to be fine right there. We're going to do a preheat of about 600 degrees, 550, 600, somewhere around in there. And then we're going to try to keep the inner pass temperature about the same. That should, that should keep a nice walled saturation on there with less, you know, this is the first time I've ever welded with this, so I don't know, I, I'm just, it, my other low hydrogen welding um, experience tells me that what I'm doing is going to give my best uniform weld. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and we're going to cut ourselves a strip. We only need to come in here about right there. All right. There we go. All right, looks good. Now I think uh, there and there is we're just eyeballing my chuck to the lines on there just kind of eyeballing it there's no need to actually dial this part in all right i got some scrapples of artificial a cloth i'm going to put this around here more than anything else it just helps hold a uniform temperature on here but uh, i also if you accidentally have a a, a droplet arc or spark or splatter um, I really would like to have it stay on the area that I'm building and not get onto any of the other part of this, this shaft here. So I am going to wrap this right up close to the top here. In fact, I'm going to start out by giving a nice wrap right, right above those threads. Nothing worse than having threads munged up. Bladder, stuff like that. <laughs> Mucky nothing, football three. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, should have just grabbed a pair of vice grips, right? Okay, we'll just tuck that in in there. All right, that'll be fine. Okay, that'll be ready to go. That's going to be ready to go, and the temperature's going to be a little better in the morning than the afternoon heat here. 
and I get the stinger over here and we'll get the torches set over here because I am going to preheat it with the torches and we'll get it going. Testing one, two, three. Okay. All right. We're going to be changing back and forth from this hat to my walling helmet. And of course, the mic has got to switch back and forth. So we're just going to put it right on, on my jacket here. All right. <clears throat> Rod in, in the oven. Nice and warm. And our parts all wrapped up, ready to go. Um, I'm probably going to adjust the speed down once we start, but for spinning uh, and preheating, the preheat and the post heat. Now I have a temp stick, which I use a lot. You see those in a lot of my other videos, and they've been the all around go to. Um, since I had the 3D printer, I do have the infrared, and sometimes it's triggered off by the surface finish of the material and sometimes it doesn't really reflect the true temperature but for more, most part it's pretty good right now and uh, we're reading about 70 degrees on that now all right let's get the torch and let's get uh, this party started here we go We're just going to go ahead and switch the direction because when I go to weld, I'm going to be welding with the rotation in this direction here. I'm not going to try to get any arc shots in here. Um, yeah, Jody at WeldingTipsTricks.com got some really nice arc action and he's set up for more of uh, showing you what's going on in the puddle. And he does have a lot of low hydrogen uh, welding videos as well. Okay, we're up a couple hundred degrees already. But I will give you some shots of steps of the wall buildup as I go along at different stages. All right, I'm getting 550 melting on the top of this thing, and here the heat gun is showing me down on that register about 330, and then up here a little bit, about 236. So that's why my temp sets are more reliable most of the time, just because of the surface condition. All right. I think I'm going to get my spring calipers so I can do a quick uh, little fit up there on, on this diameter here. And I'll just put that over there. I keep the heat in for a minute. Okay. All right, now we kind of like set this over the female when we went in to get this. We had, we had to go over by the Rutland laid there. All right, so I'm about an eighth of an inch larger than where I think I should be. So you can see we've got a good amount to build up on there. All right. Okay, still at the temperature. All right, so let's go ahead and fire up our welding machine 
and get our settings set up and we'll come back to that. Okay, on our rod oven, we have it set for 300. It's been there overnight. And actually, 292 or so, it reads on the flux, which is a good, uh, good reading. We're about 280 on the electrode in. On that galvanized surface at the bottom of the oven, about 239. All right, so just a couple different degrees for a couple different surfaces in there. Now you just gotta take that in mind for the uh, infrared there. Okay. All right, 316's rod's pretty pretty heavy duty rod. <clears throat> and <clears throat> make sure you get a ground in on this. Okay, we're going to be testing out our feed. I've got this set at 135 on the amps. I run eighth inch about 120. So we'll see if, uh, if I'm pretty close on that temperature range there. Here we go. You do have to flip all your switches on. I was using the TIG torch the other day, so. All right, here we go. Okay, we're gonna need a little bit more amperage. About 140 now. Okay, we're gonna knock the flag off of there and we're gonna check it out. I might be a little slow on my rotation there. Okay, and she's kind of cooling down just a little bit. She's still, the temperature down near my wall.
second pass. Okay, we kind of switched you around a little bit off to my port side there. Um, we're on a third. We did we did three passes right here. So we did one in there, one out here, one in there. So we're going to be doing that. We're going to stagger back and forth. The temp stick is actually showing us that we're still 550. We're maintaining. We want to maintain that um, just barely out there on the outside surface. It's holding its heat there, and we can take a couple seconds between passes to dress it, look at it, make sure that we're all happy with everything. Um, and right now I'm pretty happy with uh, the buildup I'm able. I have good control right there. I'm um, not going crazy. So we'll do another pass laying down here. I want to try to fill in this area out here. The way I'm staggering them, so I'm going to put one right down at the end, so we're going to seal the end, and then we'll that, that, bam, 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 bam. We're going to run this all the way up here. It's going to be easier to keep this uniform all the way up than it is to try to shape out that channel. We just might as well just machine what we need to machine where we machine it. Okay, let's hope that one comes out pretty good. We're only, at, that just finished up our second rod here. Okay, looks good. I see one little uh, pinhole right there. I'm gonna take and, and get my grinder and I just wanna touch that a little bit. I wanna make sure it's right at the surface. It's funny, I got two areas there. It kind of looks, looks a little bit suspicious. Maybe it is. I don't have it quite hot enough, and those are my starting areas. Everything else looks pretty good. I think I'm going to pull it out of here real quick, put it in the lathe, machine, machine this shape into it a little bit here, take a look at what we actually have down underneath that material. I don't want to go through all this effort to weld this on here and have it full of porosity if I, if I can help it. Just had some lunch here and uh, been regrouping. I've got other rod in the oven there that I'm going to be changing to. Now I stuck this in a lathe and I machined the weld that I just put on there off. And the entire amount of rod, um, there was some good areas, but the, the majority of rod I laid on there showed a content of porosity that tells me that that rod is not going to not going to work or mix with this alloy that the shaft is and, and that kind of leads me to believe that this might be uh, 86 uh, series uh, material and that was why I chose what I said in the first video there the 4130 uh, LN um, rod because it was 4130, 8630 and, and the likeness uh, of those materials and the 4340 which I tried on here was just in the uh, 40 series uh, materials here. Um, so what I've done is that uh, of course I got to go with with uh, my gut feelings on uh, on this and I know I could put 7018 on there and you got 
about 70,000 uh, strength to that material and I also have some 8018 and some 11018 which bring the strength and yields up to a higher range and that's the whole idea about this is is putting on the best and the strongest spline that we can put back on that end and it gets a coupling flange that goes on here to drive it but almost all my experience has been built up in the content of that molten material or the base material melting with the rod joining those two together and having the best blend of materials to be as strong as possible your 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 superficial or on the outside can look good like those couple passes that i put around there look dynamite it wasn't until that third pass where i actually saw a porosity um uh pocket up on the top so the slag and the top molten materials um didn't actually show up sometimes when you when you actually have porosity in a weld you can see it right in your puddle constantly and that rod didn't let me see that in there it wasn't until after it was past the puddle stage and cooling down that it uh it, it showed those pockets there um so anyhow i'm gonna go ahead and start preheating this here and i want to go ahead and take and run a bead around of uh, 11018 and take a look at how that material joins with the base material here and then we'll make a decision on whether we go ahead and we weld it up with that material um it, we, we got to be happy with what we're putting on there and how it's joining those two materials you can't just put something on there and then get all the way to the machine part of it and and then have problems show up you need you need to ha know that you're you're adding sufficient material we're not just spraying something on here we're blending the materials together to become one we're preheated on this part just like we were before and i've got my angle and my speed sitting down pretty good i did want to add a a thought or a theory also the possibility that i might have been running that 316s rod a little cold that could be a that could be an issue um but on a on a part here is not where i need to practice with that rod so i know that that rod calls out that it could be used on uh certain materials and when i have a piece of material or i find something in my rack there and i have time to sit down and play with it we will we will initiate a test and make sure that that rod can perform when we know exactly what materials are and what is made in, in design and purpose. So, and also too, we'll still work research on that 4130LN uh, rod as well. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and put on a bead here and let's see uh, how this uh, 11018 holds up here. Okay, it appeared to burn in fine, but so did the other rod. It did sound pretty smooth. I was running that about 120 on the temperature. That really looks like it's laying in really nice. We're going to lay in a couple more beads. And then I may take it in and I may put it in a lathe and take a couple skims in these areas right here because I want to make sure that I do have a good sustainable weld. Okay.
That was going to be a little fast. Okay, while this is hot, I'm going to take it in and take a light skim on it and take a look at how the material looks under the, under the skin, so to speak. We're set up in the lathe here and we need to get some power here. It's actually running pretty, pretty true. We're just gonna take kind of all the tops of these off of here, kind of like square them up, and uh, and we'll get a good look at the material underneath the surface of the weld here. Definitely is harder than 1018 for sure, and it even cuts a little harder than 7018. But that's what we expected that anyway. This will give us a good look underneath that base metal. We'll just carry this diameter right into. We're not going to worry about getting down and making it 100% round right now. We're Kind of just making a kind of a little radius right there. All right, let's look at it. Nice. I do not see any porosity holes in there at all. I like that. And come across this inside just a little bit more right here. Yep. All right. A little faster speed. I just wanted to kind of like See if it gave me just a little different finish on here. Kind of a test run. And it did. That's a nice finish there. Okay, I'm happy with the base metal meeting up with the 10, 110 18 rod. And the 11018 rod has given me more strength than it would be if I used any other rod I had. And if we wanted to, I believe we could carburize or casein harden the outside of the splines when we're done. We'll give that some thought and I'll do some uh, research on that. About three hours it took us to weld this up. A couple breaks in the middle, a couple customers coming in. Um, these are the calipers set for that diameter that we wanted to build it up to. 
So I'm pretty proud of that all the way. Maybe a couple little areas down in here, but I think that's the same. That's a smaller diameter there, but the splines definitely, I think, are going to be able to be cut there. We're going to have a water, and then we're going to get this in the lathe uh, hot, and we're going to go ahead and rough off the diameter and just look at it, make sure that we have enough weld build on it before it cools down all the way.